Hello, this is New Vision TV. I am Lynn Komjisha. Even before the last shots were heard in Kampala after the fall of Idi Amin's government on April the 11th, 1979, massive looting started. Shops, government offices and stores were all broken open for looting. Where the locks were too strong, the liberating Tanzanian soldiers blew them off to allow the local civilians loot. Now, New Vision TV relieves the first 10 weeks after the fall of Idi Amin. The fall of Idi Amin was characterized by mass looting of shops and government offices everywhere. But the public's most important target were army shops and stores that were full of sugar and other foodstuffs. For eight years, sugar had been a luxury. Suddenly, it was not even cheap but free, as everybody who got looted sugar was giving some to their neighbor. Many government cars were looted and driven freely for some weeks. Civil servants who were smart just went to their own offices and looted their own personal confidential files and destroyed them so they could start a clean new service record. But the most dangerous loot was Moroto Barracks, where hundreds of guns were stolen by locals, launching a new era of karma junk, getting firearms, triplet spears and arrows. The new Uganda National Liberation Front, UNLF government of Professor Yusuf Lule, was bathing in unprecedented public goodwill. Like it happens, the stock exchange worldwide with good tidings. All over the Uganda prices went down in what was dubbed the moshi spirit of Lule's price. The Tanzanian soldiers were an instant hit, all of them getting celebrity status. As President Godfrey Binaisa later told the OAU summit months later that unlike the Chadian women who were raped, in Uganda, the women simply made love to the Tanzanian soldiers, but the honeymoon was to last only two months. Unknown to most of the jubilating public, a power struggle had been ranging within the ruling UNLF from day one. The powerful interim legislature called the National Consultative Council under Professor Edward Rugumayo was not amused by President Lulis making appointments without its approval. 68 days later, after the 68-year-old president took office, the council overthrew him and replaced him with a lawyer called Godfrey Binaisa. Meanwhile, since President Yoram Museveni declared that his fifth elected term was going to be Kisanja Hakuna Mchezo, the public is starting to see evidence of his determination to crack down on corruption. New Vision TV looks at the trend that has got corrupt officials afraid. And I want to tell you that we are not going to tolerate this type of indiscipline anymore. Finished. This is Kisanja Akuna Mchezo, you remember? Kisanja Akuna Mchezo is a phrase mixing Luganda and Kiswahili to mean a term where corruption and incompetence will not be tolerated. Although several systematic loopholes have been sealed to make stealing public funds harder, the public is only beginning to see the new spirit through recent arrests. The first was a dramatic arrest of two Ministry of Finance officials at the close on March. Because the economy is suffering and youth unemployment is in the region of 80%, frustrating investors who would create jobs and increase industrial output is very annoying to the president. So when President Museveni received a complaint of extortion by Ministry of Finance officials from investors, he ordered for a trap to be set and netted Mr. Charles Sogo, the principal finance officer, and Mr. Geoffrey Tuyamuhika, a senior economist, red-handed, pocketing 60,000 US dollars from Guangzhou Dong Song Energy Group Company. But the anti-corruption mood is cutting across and the head of the judiciary, Chief Justice Bat Katudebe, is also determined to clean his sector. Recently, he openly disagreed with the IGG Justice Irene Muyagonja, who thought that it is not financially worthwhile to prioritize pursuing magistrates who pocket 20,000 shillings as the process would cost many millions. Subsequently, the arrest of magistrates who take small bribes has also started. Meanwhile, Seven is ruthless stance against corruption in the executive continues and last weekend, a minister was arrested in Kampala over a small bribe of about 5 million shillings. 
The Honorable Habat Kawafunzachi, the State Minister for Labor, was arrested while allegedly receiving money from Aya Hotel developer Mohamed Hamid, allegedly for helping the Sudanese businessman with scandalous allegations of perverted sexual abuse of a female employee. Usually a minister cannot be arrested for a common crime without the president's knowledge. I am saying it is a setup for my it is a connection between my constituency, FDC people, and connecting with IA in business. That Kabafunzach is winning a crucial lecture victory for NRM against heavyweight FDC Sabiti was not enough mitigating factor indicates that indeed Shisanja Kunamuchezo is serious. The government's delivery of social services and fulfillment of pledges like sanitary pads for schoolgirls is made difficult by the disappearance of resources in the pockets of corrupt officials. You're still watching New Vision TV, and now for a Pearl of Africa series, we take a look at River Samliki. River Samliki originates from Lake Edward and is found in Kasese district in the western part of the country. The river also flows through to Lake Albert in the Albertine Rift west of the Renzori Mountains. It is bordered by Samliki National Park, which harbors many animals and two hot springs. Take a look. River Samliki is a waterway connecting Lex Edward and Lake Albert in the Western Rift Valley. It flows northwards and empties into Lake Albert, located in Hoiba District in Western Uganda. It is bordered between Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The river's delta is choked with ambach, a fast-growing thorny tree, and papyrus. The river is a home of animals including elephants, hippopotami, crocodiles, and birds, monkeys, and snakes. In the Samliki National Park, there's a male and female hot spring. The male one is called Bitende and the female is called Nyansimbi. Hiking, chimpanzee trekking, birding are some of the activities you could indulge in while at the Samliki National Park. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates on your mobile, on your desktop, on your tablet, anywhere on the go by visiting www.newvision.co.ug. I'm Lynn Komjisha. <music>